Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss numerical 5 on sampling. Let me read out the question first. Determine the Nyquist rate and the Nyquist sampling interval for the following signals. Part A G1 of t equals sync of 100 pi t. Part B says G2 of t equals sync square of 100 pi t. And lastly, part C has G3 of t equals sync 100 pi t plus sync 50 pi t. Please note we are asked to find the Nyquist rate and Nyquist sampling interval for the given signals. Let us start with the solution. Before I begin solving the numerical, there are some important things we must note. So, let me just write down those points here. The spectrum of a sync function is rectangular and is of finite width. The second important point is the spectrum of a rectangular pulse is a sync function. Right, these are two important points for solving this numerical. Let us just analyze what actually these points mean. The first point says the spectrum of a sync function is rectangular and is of finite width. So, when I plot the spectra of the first signal given in part A of the question, you expect a rectangular spectra. Coming to the part B, it says the spectrum of a rectangular pulse is a sync function. So, we understand from these two points that the Fourier transform of a sync function is a rectangular function and the Fourier transform of a rectangular function is a sync function. Therefore, we can now say the sync function and the rectangular function are Fourier transform pair. Right. So, let us start now the part A of the numerical. The part A of the numerical has a signal G1 of t given by sync of 100 pi t. Now, as per the point 1 given in the node section here, the spectrum of the sync function is rectangular. Right. So, let us first write down. So, this I can also write it as sync of 2 pi w t where w is the highest frequency component of the sync function. Okay? So, therefore, I can now say 2 w is equals to 100, therefore, w is equals to 50 hertz. Right. With this information, now I can draw the spectra. Now, to draw the spectra, I will start with the x axis first. This is the frequency axis. Then I have the y axis as well, which is the spectra of the signal G1 of t. So, this is capital G1 of f. Now, let us mark w here. So, if this is w, this will be 50 hertz and somewhere here will be minus 50 hertz. Now, we will draw the rectangular function because the sink has the rectangular function has its spectra. So, I will simply draw a rectangular box here and this will be the spectra of G1 of t. Right? So, with this information, now it is very clear for us to find what is the Nyquist rate and Nyquist interval. Let me write down the equations for that. Starting with the Nyquist rate. Now, we already have studied the ideal sampling theorem. So, as per that, the Nyquist rate is equal to 2 times the highest frequency component of the input signal. So, here it is 2 multiplied by W, where W is equals to 50 hertz. So, Nyquist rate is 100 hertz. Moving on to the Nyquist interval, it is simply equals to 1 divided by Nyquist rate, so which is 1 divided by 2W. So, it is equals to 1 divided by 2 into 50. So, is equals to 0 0.01 seconds. Right. So, that is part A of the numerical. Let us now move on to part B. 
where we have given another signal g2 of t which is equal to sinc square of 100 pi t. This is where the numerical will get a little bit interesting. Now, if I remove this square part, it is as good as g1 of t. So, to write the spectra of g2 of t, I have to simplify the RHS of this equation. So, what I will write it here as sinc 100 pi t multiplied by sinc 100 pi t. Right? Now, I have shown in part A of the question, what is the spectra of sinc 100 pi t. So, I am going to draw that here. Right? This is a spectra of sinc 100 pi t. Then you have multiplication with sinc 100 pi t again. Now, please note the equation RHS is in time domain. However, the spectra is in frequency domain. So, the multiplication in time domain becomes convolution. So, now I once again write the exact same spectra here again. Okay. Now, the LHS of this equation, let me call it as equation 1, is G2 of t and let its Fourier transform be represented as capital G2 of f, which I will draw here. Right. Now, to draw the spectra of G2 of f, what I should do is, I have to start moving G1 of f here towards the right side and the g1 of f here towards the left side and I have to keep them moving in that corresponding direction unless the other spectra comes out of the first spectra. Now, let us start by overlapping the very first frequency of this g1 of f with this g1 of f and when this happens, the spectra will have a bandwidth of minus 50 this point to plus 50 this point. So, the overall bandwidth now becomes 100. Therefore, the spectra G2 of f will have a width of minus 100 to plus 100. I am going to repeat it again. Let us start moving them and the moment they overlap for the very first time, this 50 here touches the minus 50 here and when that happens, the two spectra will have a total width of minus 50 to this plus 50 which is in fact 50 and 50 and therefore we have minus 100 to plus 100 as the width of g2 of f. Now coming to the amplitude of the spectra, whenever these frequencies that is when the edges overlap the energy is minimum and when the two spectra completely overlap each other the energy is maximum. Therefore, at this point that is at minus 100, the energy is minimum and as the overlap starts to increase, the energy starts to increase. In a very similar fashion, as they start to move away from each other, the energy will start decreasing and at plus 100, it becomes 0. Right. So, this is the spectra of G2 of f, which is very important because we need the highest frequency component here and with that, I can now find the Nyquist straight and Nyquist interval. Let me start with the Nyquist straight here, 2 into w is equals to 2 into 100 is equals to 200 hertz and Nyquist interval is equals to 1 divided by 2 into w is equals to 1 divided by 2 into 100. So, this is equal to 0 0.005 seconds, right. So, that is the part b of the numerical. Lastly, let us move on to part c where the given signal is represented as g3 of t and is equal to sinc of 100 pi t plus sinc of 50 pi t. Okay. So, now similar to what I have done in the part b, let me just draw the spectra of sinc of 100 pi t here. It will look like this. Then 
we have a plus here please note it is not convolution it is a plus then we have the spectra for the second part which is sink of 50 pi t please note it is sink so this will have a spectra with a width of 25 to minus 25 however the amplitude remains the same Let me call this part as A and this part as B and therefore this will be G A of F and this will be G B of F. Now the answer to this addition is simply the overlapping of G A of F with G B of F which I will be drawing here. Right? So the width remains anyhow from minus 50 to plus 50. And somewhere here is minus 25 and here is plus 25. Please note from minus 50 to minus 25 there is no overlap. So the spectra will have an amplitude as what G A of F has. The same can be said for the other end of the spectra as well. Now from minus 50 to minus 25 the spectra does not overlap. So this is what the spectra would look like. Now, very importantly, from minus 25 to plus 25, both spectra will overlap and therefore, now there will be a change in the amplitude level of the spectra from minus 25 to plus 25 hertz. This is how the spectra of G3 of F would look like. Okay, so therefore, now coming to the last part which is the Nyquist trait. Quite obviously, if you look at the spectra, you see the highest frequency component is still 50 hertz. Therefore, Nyquist trait is equals to 2W is equals to 2 into 50 equals to 100 hertz and Nyquist interval is given by 1 divided by 2W is equals to 1 divided by 100 equals to 0 0.01 seconds. Right. So, that is about this numerical on drawing the spectra and finding the Nyquist trait and Nyquist sampling interval of some simple sync functions. If you like this video, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more information on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.